In this video, we're going to talk about Electromagnetic Weapons EMP. Before starting, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel for future updates. A sort of directed energy weapon known as the Electromagnetic Weapon uses electromagnetic radiation to send heat, mechanical, or electrical energy to a target in order to hurt or permanently harm it. Now, depending on the technology, they can be employed against people, technological devices, and broad military objectives. Directed electro Electromagnetic energy weapons can function similarly to omnidirectional electromagnetic pulse EMP devices when used against equipment by creating harmful voltage inside electronic wiring. The distinction is that they can be directed towards a particular target using a parabolic reflector and are directional. To guard against the majority of directed and undirected EMP effects, Faraday cages can be utilized. Electronics are disrupted by high-intensity radio waves used in high-energy radio frequency HERF or high-power radio frequency HPRF weapons. Large power microwave radiation, which is used by microwave devices, has a stronger wavelength than radio energy. How EMPs affect the power grid. A coronal mass ejection, CME, another type of EMP, or a lightning strike are example of natural electromagnetic, of natural electromatic pulses, or EMPs. Here, though, we'll talk about a man-made EMP, which is produced by detonating a nuclear bomb at a great height. Within a specific radius, a nuclear weapon detonated at ground level or an airburst a few hundred feet above the surface produces significant change. However, just a small portion of the region is damaged. In 1945, nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan, had a radius blast of roughly 1.7 to 3 miles, causing significant casualties and property damage. Outside of the blast radius, radiation sickness and its immediate and long-term repercussions are the main worry. However, in addition to resulting in fatalities and property damage or destruction, an EMP also has the additional impact of rendering most electrical devices inoperable, including 1. Appliances that are plugged into a wall outlet that uses grid power, including laptops, televisions, cell phones that are charging, cell phones that are charging, routers for the internet, etc. 2. The majority of vehicles produced after the early 1980s. Automakers started installing microprocessors and electronic circuits about the middle of the 1980s, but these components are unlikely to withstand an EMP weapon in the larger electronics crippling zone area. 3. Digital or electronic locks. In case the power goes out, make sure you have a backup using a regular key if your home has one of these. Additionally, be sure to bring that key with you. Any other electronic or digital locking mechanism, such as a safe or a gun safe, is subject to the same rules. If the power goes out and you can't open your $1,500 electronic lock gun safe, what good is it? the golden horde is breaking down your door in the meantime and is ravenous. The same idea applies to any type of electrically powered device such as fingerprint or retinal scan ID. Our best knowledge indicates that the following devices should withstand an EMP attack. 1. Dirt bikes or off-road motorbikes from before 1990. 2. A large number of diesel-powered cars using conventional glow plug and ignition systems, some of which were produced into the early 1990s. 3. Basic electric gadgets, including kitchen appliances and power equipment. The main issue is that following an EMP strike, the electrical grid will likely be offline. Therefore, you must ensure that you have solar, gas, or diesel generator with an inverter ideally insulated in a Faraday cage. The blast radius of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was approximately between 1.7 miles and 3 miles, as we previously established. The 100 megaton Tsar Bomba weapon from Russia, which was the biggest bomb as of 2014, was a 7.7 mile explosive radius. The Tsar Bomba's explosion produced a fireball with an estimated diameter of 1.8 miles and a thermal radiation radius of 47.8 miles. The Starfish Prime EMP incident of 1962. But an EMP is detonated in the air, not on the ground, or slightly higher airburst. Let's take a closer look at the concrete illustration of an EMP's impacts. The Johnson Atoll, a barren series of islands located roughly 860 miles to the southwest of Hawaii, was the target of an American 1.45 
megaton thermonuclear weapon explosion on July 9, 1962, at an altitude of around 250 miles. The Starfish Prime missile still holds the record for largest space bomb ever detonated. An electromagnetic pulse produced by the explosion resulted in power outages and other electrical problems on the Hawaiian Islands, which were nearly a thousand miles away. Additionally, lost were at least six satellites that were in the explosion's orbit. For the first time, scientists understood how electrical components may be harmed by a nuclear bomb that detonates at a high altitude, possibly paralyzing a vast area. The Russian Tsar Bomba was previously discussed. Imagine what a warhead the size of the Tsar Bomba would accomplish if it were to explode in low orbit above us. If a 1.45 megaton bomb could destroy electronics from a thousand miles away, the whole U.S. electricity grid would go dark due to its 50 megaton production or at least a significant portion of it. Most vehicles would not start. If power plants go down, there will likely be no energy for weeks, months, or perhaps longer unless power plants have been hardened in advance. Trent Franks, a congressman from Arizona, has been pleading with our government to act to improve security for critical infrastructure for years. He has focused in particular on the threat that an EMP poses on the power grid, which Rep. Franks notes could maintain either naturally from a solar flare or by way of a targeted man-made weapon. Unfortunately, either the U.S. House nor the state have taken any official action on this important matter so far. Another issue is Russia's most recent nuclear weapon, the RS-28 Sarmat, sometimes known as the Satan II, which has scheduled to go into operation in a matter of months in June 2022. Each missile has 15 warheads, each with a 550 kiloton payload. This is around 36 times more potent than the nuclear weapon that was dropped on Hiroshima, which had a yield of about 15 kilotons. Also, keep in mind that each warhead has a maximum destructive power of 8250 kilotons and can be directed at various targets. If that weren't terrifying enough, Russian missiles are also capable of 16,000 mile per hour hypersonic delivery. Due to this, it is much harder for American or space-based sensor systems to identify it, and it may even be resistant to American missile defense systems. It goes without saying that any of these warheads might detonate either at ground level to destroy specified military objectives or in the atmosphere to cause an EMP. Any survivors in America would be returned to a pre-electricity 1800s way of life if ground-level nuclear weapons and EMPs were used together. Nuclear tsunami. A nuclear tsunami is a relatively recent advancement in the delivery of a nuclear weapon. The explosion of a nuclear warhead delivered by an unmanned submarine should theoretically achieve this. According to claims, the underwater detonation that results could send a tsunami wave as high as 1,640 feet. Coastal areas should be particularly at risk from such an assault. The danger might actually be present. As was previously mentioned, Russia is speaking out more and more against the NATO nations assisting Ukraine. Russian state television broadcast an animation in May 2022 illustrating the potential impact of a weapon known as Poseidon on the entire British Isles. It is alleged that the tsunami could turn Britain into a radioactive desert unfit for anything for a long time, in addition to causing total flooding and destruction. Ukraine and Russia. Recently, Russia has resumed making nuclear strike threats. According to analysts in the West, the invading forces could target our nation's territory with an electromagnetic pulse attack. According to Financial Times, this can be accomplished by exploding a nuclear charge in outer space. By detonating a nuclear charge in space, it is possible to deliver an electromagnetic pulse that can completely destroy all electronic components rendering both civilian and military equipment useless. For instance, in Kyrgyzstan, a tactical EMP could render inoperable the systems that run the area's dams, clog the roads and bridges with miles of immobilized vehicles, and leave the civilian population without access to heat or food. It's possible to disable the vehicles as well. However, NATO will launch a collective defense response if Russia dares to use EMP warfare. According to former Pentagon officer Roger Pardo Marer, the unpredictable effects of spillover on the Earth's atmosphere, the environment, satellites, and downwind populations should suffice as justification for invoking Article 5. What can we do? What can we do then? Well, as previously stated, if it's an EMP, protect. 
delicate electronics with a Faraday cage. You might want to take a look at EMP Shield if you require something more robust for EMP protection, including for your home, vehicles, and solar panels. Prangly, consider evacuating any military targets such as nuclear missile sites, air force bases, and similar installations if it's a ground-level nuclear attack. Consider relocating to a rural area since many cities, particularly those with naval bases, can be targets. Although no one likes to consider life after a nuclear attack, many people will likely survive one if the right preparations are made in advance. Last but not least, as mentioned in Part 1 of the series, keep stockpiling food, water, and water filtration systems, or at the very least, water bottles and filters. So what do you think of this video? Do let us know in the comment box below, and please like it, subscribe to the channel for future updates as well. Thanks so much.